it doesn't take to full screen and it shows a message to the user. Um, and the basic form, it could be maybe a message and then two points yes or no, based on what the user selects, then the application will go to the next step. But that's the basic form. Like that, like that. If 
what now did in place and maybe said some. It's not the first place that we're still going to take, right? It's the last place that it put on that stack of space that it take. So that's going to be how a stack works. And that's how the back stack for Android. So it's really that you are maybe a user and you're seeing the home screen first. That home screen you are seeing the left and left the back stack. If you move away from the home screen and maybe you go to the main screen, right? That main screen also gets a left the back stack. So if you click your back button, it means you are sending Backstab to pop that main screen out of it. So when it pop, the next screen is your home screen, right? So that was this basically. So you don't have to handle that on your own. Android navigation component and all that for you. But prior to Android navigation components, you have to make use of the backstab and stuff. You have to do that in your own So that's one of the benefits. The second is it simplifies the implementation of common and uh, I think navigation is area, like bottom navigation. So implement bottom navigation using the format method, maybe file transactions and conference manager. It was kind of a hassle, but thanks to Android navigation component that has been simplified. Excuse me. It also implements type save argument passing. What does type save mean? Um, for strongly type, okay. which is an excellent file. XML is how user interfaces are built in Android development, So I will show you in a little while when I get home so I will be able to see that. Also, the navigation component consists of three main parts. The first part is your navigation graph. The navigation graph is the graph where you see all the screens in your application and how they are connected to each other. So let's say you are home, the home screen, and as a developer, you want to see, okay, where does like how does the user navigate from the home screen, and which screen does the user go to next? You can uh, reference your navigation graph to check that out. And also, the second is your NAV host. For NAV host and NAV controllers, I like to use the analogy of a car and an engine. Right? A car is basically your NAV host. The car empty container, here different elements are put into it. But in order for those elements to move, in order to move those elements that can get through them, you need the engine, right? And the nav controller is the engine in this case. If you look to my left, this is an example of a navigation graph. As you can see, this is a simple app that has a title screen and a page screen. And the navigation graph shows you how the title screen is connected to the game screen. These different screens are called destinations. These different screens are called destinations, sorry. And the arrow is called an action. The action is basically the logical connection between the screens in your application. So the action shows you how the two screens are connected to each other, which one is the source screen and which one is the destination screen, and how you, like the next screen that you can get after moving from one screen to another screen. Yes, I think I've come to the end of my call.